میرا فرینڈ ہے شاداب جے این یو میں ایک تو اس کے پاس میں چلا جاتا ہوں کلیکشن کے لیے ایک میرے ذاکر نگر میں فرینڈ ہے ان سے لے لیتا ہوں پھر علی گڑھ میں کچھ دوست ہیں میرے جیسے رضا ہے یاسر ہے خاور ہے تو مطلب ایک پورا یہ کچھ نیٹ ورک ہے ہاں صرف لڑکے ہیں لڑکیاں بھی لڑتی لڑکیوں کا مجھے پتہ نہیں ان لوگوں کو شوق ہے بھی کہ نہیں میری نالج میں ایسی کوئی بھی لڑکی نہیں ہے اگر گھر والوں نے شادی کر دی ایسی لڑکی کے ساتھ جس کو یہ چیزوں سے نفرت ہے تو کیا کرو یہ چیز بتا دوں گا بھائی آپ نے اچھا مجھے کوشچن دے دیا جو عمیر سے لیتا ہوں اس میں اس کے نام سے فولڈر بنا رکھا ہے یہ اپنے بھائی سے موویز یہ ڈاکیومنٹریز لی ہیں اس کا ڈاکیومنٹریز بہت ساری ہیں یہ ہندی مووی سے کلیکشن ہے یہ فنی ویڈیوز ہیں اس میں میں نے کئی سارے فٹ بالس کے بھی ہیں کئی سارے اس کے علاوہ گیمس ہیں اس میں میوزک بہت ہیں اس میں نائنتھ میں تھا میں نے اس کو ڈیسک ٹاپ لیا تھا فسٹ ٹائم تب میں مووی لے کے آیا تھا کہو نہ پیار ہے وہ میری فسٹ ڈی وی سی ڈی تھی اس کے بعد جو ہے پھر تو سی ڈیز لیتے رہے سی ڈیز لیں ڈی وی ڈیز لیں پھر ہارڈ ڈسک آ گئی ہارڈ ڈسک لینے لگے میں ابھی حال فی میں گیا تھا نیرو پلیس ہارڈ ڈسک کا ہی پتہ کرنا میں نے یہ بھی پوچھا تھا کہ مجھے دس ہزار جی بی کی ہارڈ ڈسک مل سکتی ہے کہ نہیں تو انہوں نے کہا مل جائے گی اٹ ول کاسٹ نائنٹی تھاؤزینڈ میں وہیں چپ ہو گیا آپ کو معلوم ہے نا کہ ہارڈ ڈسک کریش بھی ہو سکتی ہے یہ لیکن بہت ریئرلی ہوتی ہیں ہو گئی تو ہو گئی تو پھر کچھ نہیں کر سکتے پھر کلیکشن کرنا پڑے گا مجھے جب وہ بٹرینل پرنٹ آ جاتا تو میں وہیں سے ڈاؤن لوڈ کرتا ہوں میرا سیون ہنڈریڈ کا پلان ہے انلمیٹیڈ ڈاؤن لوڈنگ ہے اور فائیو ہنڈریڈ کے پی ایس اسپیڈ آتی ہے پر جو آپ کرے وہ الیگل نہیں ہے مجھے نہیں لگتا الیگل ہے یو ٹورنٹ پہ جو موویز آ رہی ہیں وہ الیگل مجھے نہیں لگتا ہوں گی کیونکہ اس میں جب اچھے پرنٹ مل رہے ہیں اور وہ پھر پہلے وہ موویز جا چکی ہیں تھیٹر سے پر وہ الیگل ہے اچھا یہ چیز مجھے نہیں پتہ کیسے ہو سکتا ہے اگر کوئی چیز یو ٹرن میں آپ کو فری مل رہی ہے جو آپ کو نارملی لیکن میں تو انٹرنیٹ کو پے کر رہا ہوں نا تو مگر آپ مووی کے لیے تو نہیں پے کر رہے ہو نا بٹ ٹورنٹ میں جو ہے آپ کو ممبرشپ کے لیے آپ کو ڈالرس میں پے کرنا پڑتا ہے کتنا ٹین ڈالر فور فور ممبرشپ اس کے بعد انلمیٹیڈ ڈاؤن لوڈنگ ہے اس کی وہ ہر موویز دیتے ہیں یہ بھی لائف ٹائم ممبرشپ ہے ان کی سو آپ کو ٹینشن نہیں ہے کہ آپ کو یہ لیگل کام کر رہے ہو نہیں یہ تو میرا ایک شوق ہے اور مجھے نہیں لگتا یہ موویز کلیکشن کوئی غلط شوق ہے موویز کلیکٹ کر رہا ہوں وہ سب لوگ شیئر کر رہے ہیں اس میں کچھ غلط نہیں لگتا مجھے میرے لیے اس سے پہلی چیز ہے کہ جہاں سے اویلیبلٹی بہت آسان ہو لوگ کہتے ہیں کہ جو چیز اتنی آسانی سے مل جاتی ہے نا اس کی ہمیں کوئی ویلیو نہیں ہوتی ہے مجھے کچھ آسانی سے نہیں ملی میں نے بہت محنت کی اس کے لیے مجھے ویلیو پتا ہے اس کی کیا ویلیو ہے میرے لیے تو بہت ویلیو رکھتی ہیں چیزیں Can you hear the hum? 
a very distinct hum. Now I'll apply the filter. Clearly the hum is gone. Kishori Amonkar performed at the Deval Club in Kolhapur 15 times. One gentleman recorded all 15 of those concerts. Sitting right in front, he had a spool player, told Kishori Tai, I'm going to record you. Sat there, recorded it. Three years ago, those pools came to me. I have restored them partially. There are uh, really rare recordings of from Calcutta, Indore, Bhopal, Chennai. These are all private collections. Um, typically, the owner is no longer alive. The children, grandchildren don't know what to do with it. They don't listen to it. Um, they kind of think it's valuable. People show up uh, with grocery bags full of CDs. Um, very rarely, there's a sheet of paper in it which has everything indexed. Sometimes, they don't want you to even acknowledge that they gave it to you. Everybody's scared of the law, don't want to break the law. But the archive now, it's on your hard disk, basically. No. No. We have five people. They're all over the country. Every month, they get a fresh version of the entire archive. So there are five copies of this entire thing spread all over the country. If one of us passes away or you know gets hit with a bus or whatever, then they will have to find one more person. So at always, five people will have uh, will have this entire thing. If we could do a Louvre to our art, uh, we should. Uh, the pieces here are at least as beautiful, at least as valuable. Uh, but we don't have the national sort of vision for something like this. You can't measure with money what this is. What is the world willing to pay for it? At this point, probably nothing. Kumar Gandharv, great master. If Kumar Gandharvji's family tries and se to sell one hour of recordings to a record company, they would have difficulty getting 15,000, 20,000 rupees for it. Can't they just be made available for free? By whom? By you? All of this is stuck in one legal jam. Amir Khas Saab's son is a very well-known um, cine actor. He acts in television serials, etc., etc. I have great recordings of Amir Khas Saab. If I started giving them for free, he will certainly object. It's my dad's property. It is still within copyright. What right have you to distribute this for free? See, some of the great masters view their recordings as business cards. If five people hear the copy of something that is out there, then they might want to come for the live performance. It is, some, it is the hook to get them to the live performance. They understand that. They understand it very clearly. And that is why some of the greatest, most popular people in the world of music are also the most recorded and whose recordings are available in plenty. Um, because they want you to experience it in the safety of your home, spending nothing. Then realize, you know what, this is not the thing, okay? I want to, I want to see the great man do it live. I want to be part of that experience. This is a love story. Or at least, it's a story about how the art of love is not so different from the love of art. That's to say, it's a story in which love gets to decide first how valuable something is. Maybe just by us asking, did this make my heart burst open? But where there's love, there's often marriage. And then, like with all contracts, there is usually money. So anyway, here is how this story of love and money begins. In 1450, the printing press was invented, and slowly, stories which were once remembered by heart could be held in your hand. Soon, the love of stories made books a profitable business, and soon after, 
a queen made the business exclusive. And just as quickly, the first books were pirated. Anonymous storytellers were now authors. And if a story has your name on it, then surely the story belongs to you, just like property. That's what the philosophers were saying. Property can be bought and sold. Property is simple, but love's a bit complicated and full of options. So things can get confusing between authors and producers, lovers and owners, and who belongs to whom. At such points, someone volunteers to put down rules, like someone who knows about fine print and things. And usually, that's someone who owns a printing machine. Blank check hai. Jo chaho bar lo. But if a machine is what you need to own an idea, then maybe everyone could have a machine to make their own ideas. Oh, but wait, is that in the rules? Ah, well, in love, it's sometimes too late for questions. But while all these free love people were running amok, there were responsible folks holding meetings, trying to save the world from chaos and introduce some morality. रिश्ते में तो हम तुम्हारे पाप होते हैं नाम है शहंशाह वेल दिस इज अ लव स्टोरी एंड द पाथ ऑफ लव इट नेवर रन स्मूथ जब तुम छोटे थे तब तुम्हारा क्या प्लान था कि क्या करोगे बड़े होकर कुछ नहीं गरीबी में पैदा हुआ प्लान थोड़ी होता गरीबी में कुछ <laughs> बस पैसा कमाने का प्लान रहता है <laughs> हम लोग के साथ समाज सेवा हो गया हम लोग के लाइन में इतने करोड़ की पिक्चर हम लोग सौ में पचास में दे रहे हैं ना अभी तुम ये पिक्चर की टिकट तुम पचास रुपये हैं चालीस में बेचो कोई नहीं लेगा मैं पायरेसी पचास में बेच रहा हूँ हस खेल के पब्लिक ले रही सौ में भी ले रही 
पर सिनेमा हॉल जाने में एक मजा भी तो होता है मजा तो होता है पर आदमी नहीं जाता ना खर्चा मजबूत होता ना खर्चा फिर इससे अच्छा आदमी सोचता महंगाई से अच्छा ये डीवीडी खरीदो ना यहाँ भाव भी करूँगा तो पचास में दे देगा अब टाकी सोला थोड़ी भाव करके देगा पचास में टिकट अभी एक अकेला आदमी आएगा तो कम से कम पाँच सौ खर्चा करेगा अभी नॉर्मल आदमी अकेला तो नहीं आया लड़का है तो जाहिर सी बात आइटम को लेके आएगा फिर आइटम खर्चा दिखाएंगे फिर इससे अच्छा डी वी में दिया वो भी दे कि भी देगा खत्म हो गया अगर कि आपको पैसे का धंधा चालू करना है तो फिर कितने पैसे चाहिए अगर चौकी तुम्हारी अच्छी है तो पाँच हज़ार में तुम धंधा चालू कर सकते हो अगर तुम्हारी नवी चौकी नए सेक्शन में तुम घुस रहे हो तो बीस हज़ार रुपये तुमको मिनिमम चौकी बांटने के लिए चाहिए पुलिस को ऑपरेट नहीं करिए तो हम लोग क्या होगा थोड़ी धंधा चालू करने की हम लोग तो पांडू भी आके लाफा मार के उठा हर एक का एरिया एक 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 आदमी बांट लेता है जैसे अभी अंधेरी में तुम आएंगे तो कचरा एरिया है वो तो वहाँ पचास के भाव से तुमको डी वी मिलेंगी स्टेशन पे जितने भी तुम घूमोगे ना सब पचास के भाव से मिलेंगे फिर तुम स्टेशन एरिया छोड़ोगे पौस एरिया में घुसोगे जैसे अभी सात बंगला गए तो वहाँ तुमको अस्सी सौ कोरेगाँव में ये शमशेर कॉपीरेट भी करता है और खुद का धंधा भी चलाता है वो रेड मारते ना कॉपी कॉपी पर रेड मारते नहीं क्या पायरेसी पर रेड मारते वो भी वहाँ करता है और खुद का पायरेसी धंधा भी चलाता है पुलिस में क्या नहीं नहीं अभी ये जो नीचे पिक्चर निकली है तो उसका जो एक बंदा रहता है उसको डायरेक्टर उसके हाथ में दे डालता है भाई इस पर रेड मारना है तो वो रेड मारने का जो हम लोग खबर देते हैं कि भाई हम लोग निकल रहे रेड मारने के लिए तुम लोग बंद करते हो धंधा माल कहाँ से मिलता है तुम माल तो अभी वड़े पाँव से ज़्यादा दुकान होगी इसकी सबसे पहली बात है ना मैं बोलूँ मैडम अगर तुमको कुछ पकड़ना है तो चौकी को पकड़ो फिर मेन चौकी को तुम बांध दोगे अभी जैसे अमिताभ बच्चन ने कहता पा पिक्चर के टाइम पर किसी की जरूरत नहीं थी कि धंधा लगा दे चौकी में पैसा मारा था अमिताभ बच्चन ने चार महीना धंधा नहीं लगा पाई था हम लोग तुम्हें क्यों लगता है कि पायरेसी का धंधा इतना अच्छा चलता है पब्लिक ही बढ़ावा दे रही ना अभी तो उनको पायरेसी से प्यार है ना Can love stay innocent and free forever? When does a relationship begin to feel like a bad bargain? Its fairness in question, its value a matter of doubt. No, 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 no,
someone kind of alerted us and said, you know, uh, you need to be careful about sea of stories because there's already an adaptation by Tim Supple, and you need to verify if you can use his book for your own adaptation. Just Google uh, and looked up Salman Rushdie's website, and it uh, said that if you're using any of his works, you have to contact Wiley Agency, which is what I did. So they mailed us back, and, and she said that uh, there's already an existing theatrical adaptation of Rushdie's Harunas Chitra, which is Tim Supple's version. Uh, you have to confirm that any future adaptation and production by your group, you know, will not draw from Salman Rushdie's book, Harun and the Sea of Stories, and that Salman Rushdie himself will not be associated in any way with any production by your theatre group. Uh, we took the objection seriously. So it was now our own uh, kind of... We've come up with a whole new script. I think the most disappointing factor about this process was that there was absolutely no space for dialogue. Yeah. But surely Rashti is not to blame, no? Of course Rashti is to blame. I think he should take responsibility for uh, the, 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 the books that he's written. And especially the books that he's writing also does not... I mean, it's a, it's a weird thing to say, but his books do not do, denote this kind of attitude, you know? And I think he should have put his books under Creative Commons or I don't know what. But at least create points of access, no? But if there was no copyright to prevent people from doing stuff other people had done, then there'd be no original stuff made, right? I don't know about originality. Even Rashdeep, he was inspired probably by thousands of other things that got him to write the sea of stories. Do you still love Rashdeep? <laughs> yeah. I can't. Yeah, I do. <laughs> जो कहानियाँ आपने लिखी हैं, उनका आइडिया आपको कैसा है? या मेघवाल होते हैं ना, चमड़े का काम करने वाले, ज़्यादातर यही बोलाते हैं और उनको गीत भी ज़्यादा याद हैं, कहानियाँ भी ज़्यादा याद हैं। मैं सुनता था, सब गांवों सुन सुन के लिखी। तो अगर ये कहानी आपने किसी से सुनी हो, फिर आपने लिखती, बाकी उससे पुनर्सर्जन ये दूसरा कहानी भी है ये ऑल्टरनेट डे पे बुखार आता है उस बुखार के लिए अनुष्ठान तो लेकिन जब मैंने दूसरा लिखी कई लिखो माने बताओ नहीं जब रास्ता में पढ़ के सुनाई तो इतनी आलोचना जानती थी एक लड़की ने कहा मैंने तो क्यों सुनाया आप क्यों क्यों कर दियो ये बीस के अंदर और जितनी संभावना बरगद की रहती है उतनी मैं कतार को जो मैंने आठवीं नवी क्लास में संकल्प कर लिया था कि मैं राजस्थान में लिखूंगा और इसलिए गांव जाना जरूरी है और नौकरी कि नौकरी करूंगा तो मैं आत्महत्या कर लूंगा परीक्षा में जान जान के फेल होता था ज्यादा रह सकूं कॉलेज उसके अंदर भी प्रेम की चिट्ठियाँ लिखता था। पर आपको ये चिंता नहीं हुई कि फिर पैसों की कमाई कैसे होगी? पैसों के लिए लिखेगा। लिखने के बाद पैसा मिल जाए, वो तो मंजूर है। लेकिन पैसा कमाने के लिए लिखना, चाहे कविता लिखो, चाहे ऐसी किताबें लिखो, मैं पाठ्यक्रम की किताबें लिखो, जो चेतन मस्तिष आपका धीरे-धीरे धीरे समृद्ध होता रहता है। एक ही भी मेरी ये राय है पक्की कि ये कलात्मक चीजें हैं आदमी के जागृत मस्तिष्क की उपज नहीं है ये अनकॉन्शियस सबकॉन्शियस माइंड की उपज है किताब उसके खुद को आश्चर्य हो कि ये बात मेरे भीतर थी क्या इसका लेकिन मैं हूँ वो ज़्यादा आशंका रहे कि वो बेहतर हो
Stories scatter far and wide, like seeds, passing from one tongue to another. Sometimes a story grows tired or unwanted and is left behind, waiting for love to find it again. Sometimes a new love makes you forget the old one. Sometimes the new love reminds you of the old one and you go back to look for it, hoping to complete the story of your life or maybe the history of the world. हेलो रिजवी साहब इस वक्त आप एफएम गोल्ड पर लाइव हैं मेरा कहना ये है कि ये प्रोग्राम बेहद पसंद है सिर्फ ये प्रोग्राम ऐसा है जो पुरानी फिल्मों के यानी 50 से पहले गाने सुनवाते हैं आप देखिए 126 घंटे एक हफ्ते में आपका प्रोग्राम चलता है लेकिन सिर्फ एक घंटा देकर ये इतना इंसाफी है जी 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 तो इरफान साहब मुझे आपसे उम्मीद है कि आप मेरी और मेरे जैसे बहुत सो की बातें सुनकर कुछ इसमें कामयाब हो जाएंगे ज़रूर ज़रूर बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया ये थे ए एच रिजवी जो कि हमें बुलंद शहर से फ़ोन कर रहे थे और आप हैं इरफान के साथ लता मंगेशकर आशा भोसले इवन गीता दत्त के आने से पहले करीब साढ़े चार सौ औरतें हैं जो गाकर जा चुकी उसी तरह आपको मेल सिंगर्स में भी मिलेगा आपको ये जानकर बहुत ही दिलचस्प लगेगा कि एच या कोलंबिया रिकॉर्ड्स या पॉलीडोर या दूसरी कंपनियां मतलब सब लोग पैरेलल म्यूज़िक के धंधे में थे सिर्फ फिल्म म्यूज़िक के ही बल पे कारोबार नहीं करते थे कि उसमें जॉनर्स क्या थे और कौन कौन सिंगर्स थे देखिए किन नामों से वो जारी होती थी उर्दू मॉडर्न उसमें जैसे उसके जॉनर लिखा रहे उर्दू मॉडर्न कवालियाँ हिंदी गाली विवाह गारियाँ भोजपुरी फोक बिरहा कवाली मुकाबला भोजपुरी विवाह गीत चैती मतलब ये एक लिस्ट है और साहब गाते कौन लोग थे शकीला बानो भोपाली गुलाब बाई हबीब पेंटर कवाल रज़िया बेगम राशिद हैरान कवाल माया रानी दास और सहेलियाँ ये लोग गए कहाँ उनके बारे में बात कौन करेगा ऐसा नहीं है कि वो म्यूज़िक अवेलेबल नहीं है जाहिर है कि वो म्यूजिक ऑल इंडिया रेडियो के पास अवेलेबल नहीं है कॉमन इंप्रेशन है कि सिर्फ ऑल इंडिया रेडियो के पास बहुत सारे पुराने गाने हैं देखिए ऑल इंडिया रेडियो के पास जो डे टू डे ब्रॉडकास्ट में ग्रामोफोन लाइब्रेरी इस्तेमाल में आती थी वो ग्रामोफोन लाइब्रेरी रिप्लेस हो गई सी लाइब्रेरी से बीच में ये आइडिया था कि ग्रामोफोन लाइब्रेरी को डिजिटाइज कर दिया जाए और सर्वर पर सारे गाने डाल दिए जाएँ लेकिन वो एक बहुत ही एक दुख भरी कहानी है वो पूरा डिजिटाइजेशन प्रोजेक्ट हाफ वे अबाउट हो गया किसी की उसमें दिलचस्पी नहीं थी तो फिर वो जो आप गाने बजाते हो जी वो कहाँ से आते हैं बेसिक फैशन और फेथ के साथ मैंने धीरे धीरे करके अपना आर्काइव बढ़ाया बाद में जब से ये वर्चुअल प्रैक्टिस बढ़ी तो इससे थोड़ा सा और भी नेटवर्क बढ़ा दिल ने फिर याद किया कि जो लिसनर्स हैं कि वो दीवानों की तरह मुझे प्यार करते हैं तो इस तरह ऐसे लिसनर्स भी पूल में आए 
जो हमारे साथ अपना आर्काइव है उसे शेयर करते हैं इस तरह से एक बड़ा आर्काइव इसकी वजह से बना पर एक तरह से ये जो नेटवर्क है कि कलेक्टर्स अपना आर्काइव पूल करके आप तक पहुंचाते हैं हुँ. और आप ए आई पर पहुँचाते हैं इट्स एक्चुअली इलीगल राइट इट इज नॉट इलीगल इन दैट जो आई साइन हुआ होगा या पब्लिक सर्विस ब्रॉडकास्टर होने के नाते और इंडिया रेडियो के पास शायद सारे म्यूजिक के लीगल बॉन्ड है कॉरपोरेट रेडियो में ये हमेशा उठता है सवाल कि चलिए हम कर तो लें ऐसा कोई प्रोग्राम जिसमें पुराने गाने बजाए जाएं लेकिन हमारे पास जो लाइसेंस है वो एक्स ईयर से वाई ईयर तक का ही है उससे पहले का हम नहीं बजा सकते उसके बाद का नहीं बजा सकते म्यूजियम्स जिन चीज़ों को बचा रहे हैं उनको जनता नहीं बचाना चाहती तभी म्यूजियम्स बचाते होंगे और आप देखेंगे कि म्यूजियम्स भी इन चीज़ों को नहीं बचाते जिनको जनता बचा रही है दाखिल कि एटी नाइन नाइन्टी के आसपास मैं कानपुर में कुछ पुराने रिकॉर्ड ढूंढ रहा था तो उसमें ये मुझे लगा कि ये मेरे बचपन का सुना हुआ गाना था रज़िया बेगम का गाया हुआ गाना है ये धरोहर उत्तर प्रदेश की है नौटंकी ये देखिए ये, तो ये किसने लिखे ना श्री कृष्ण पहलवान ने श्री कृष्ण पहलवान ये इनका प्रेस था मतलब आप कौन से कंपनी में थे कृष्णा भाई कृष्णा भाई जो थिएटर चलाती थी स्टेज पे हम लोग की मुलाकात हुई और आपस में प्रेम हो गया आपसे शादी कर ली <laughs> पर जो पहले नौटंकी करती थी जैसे गुलाब भाई और ये सब आप जो कह रहे हैं हाँ हाँ। उस तरह की नौटंकी तो अब नहीं होती नहीं, नहीं होती है आज भी होती नौटंकी तो नौटंकी है नौटंकी के नाम पे ही पार्टी चलती है अब आप करें ना करें वो आपके परमिशन तो नौटंकी का मिलता परमिशन नौटंकी के नाम से मिलता है डांस का नृत्य कला के नाम से नहीं मिलता है आज जो लोग चाहते हैं जो नई पीढ़ी चाहती है 
उसके लिए हम लोग कुछ नहीं तो बदल कर देते हैं बाकी एक स्टोरी वही होती है तो आजकल की पीढ़ी क्या चीजें पसंद करती है आजकल की पीढ़ी को डांस ही पसंद है डांस ज्यादा पसंद है डांस ज्यादा पसंद है लड़की हो लड़कियां हो चेहरा मोरा ना हो शक्ल ना हो लड़की होना चाहिए हमारे बच्चे हैं इस हमारे इस लाइन से बहुत दूर हैं ऐसा क्यों नेम ने रखा है पसंद है भाई अब वो टाइम जमाना नहीं रह गया कि हम लड़कियों को इस लाइन में डालें हमने डाल दिया उनका किसी से टच हो गया मामला शादी कर लिया लव मैरिज कर लिया तो क्या करेंगे फिर पर लव मैरिज तो आपने भी किया वो तो ठीक है लेकिन हम लोग समझदार थे हम लोग कलाकार थे आजकल के बच्चे समझदार नहीं होते इस तरीके के फिल्में आ रहे हैं इतने इतने कपड़े पहने इतने जो गाना आया मुन्नी बदनाम हुई क्यों क्या हम लोगों को कौन देखे आज सिर्फ बीस साल पहले हम लोग आते थे हम लोग फुल कपड़े डाल दिए उसको लहंगा वगैरह और इसी गाने पे फिल्म चल गई आपने देखा था वो गाना ये बीसों साल पहले हम गाते थे गाना उसकी पलट बनाए इन लोगों ने बहुत पुराना गाना हमें खुद ने मालूम किसने बनाया लेकिन सुनते रहते थे गाने लगे तो जब आपने फिल्म में देखा वो गाना आपको गुस्सा आया अगर हम लिखे होते हैं तो गुस्सा आते कि देखो भाई हमने किसी अच्छा से लिया गाना किसी, इसको खराब कर दिया ले लिया भोजपुरी जो है पहले हम लोग गाते रहते हैं और फिल्म वाले उसको देख के नकल कर लेते हैं ये है हमेशा हाँ कभी उल्टा भी तो होता होगा <laughs> कभी कभी हम लोग फिल्म से ले लेते हैं हम भी उनके गाते हैं फिल्म वालों के फिल्म वाले हम लोग के ले लेते तो उनसे क्या पर जो फिल्मी कंपनियां हैं वो कहती हैं कि अगर कि आप हमारा गाना गाओगे तो आपको हमें पैसे देने पड़ेंगे आप यूं ही हमारा गाना नहीं गा सकते हो आपको पता था? नहीं नहीं स्टेज पे कोई रोक नहीं है किसी का भी गाना गा लीजिए किसी का भी गा सकते जो चीज़ मार्केट बिक रही मैंने आपको बताया ना जो चीज़ मार्केट के अंदर बिक रही है उसको कोई भी किसी वक्त यूज कर सकता है उसको कोई दिक्कत नहीं The bazaar of the world is respectfully promiscuous. There is a shop for every kind of love, a song for every kind of lover. So who gave the monopoly to monogamy and made every other love a crime and painted every other market black? Who said there can be just one shop for songs? जरूरत से ज्यादा उम्र है तुम्हारी तो फिर इतने गुलफाम क्यों हो रहे हो अरे जवानी में दिल को संभाला है तुमने अजीब बुढ़ापे में बदनाम क्यों हो रहे हो अमित बदनाम हुआ ओटी ना तेरे लिए अमित बदनाम हुआ ओटी ना तेरे just got an index page where i update it try to update it every week mostly i source the original songs from some vague place i think on napster back then it was napster in 2000 i managed to download the original songs and also download the indian version there are enough songs that are inspired gadi barman sd barman op nayar madan mohan no, but op nayar used to blend it in the indian way 56 55 you know i was in ninth <laughs> class we never had those you know the only the valve radio that's all and uh, then i used to tell people as this is copied from latin this is copied from uh, uh, this is spanish you see and all that people never understood i did not know this fellow was will be so much interest that we say would have kept it <laughs> what is the point of your website like what do you hope to achieve by running this website <laughs> to be very frank it's a very personal project How many songs have you talked about in your website? About 600 plus. So, are all of them equally copied? No, definitely not. There are actually some which I can only say they have been inspired, and inspired is very different from copied. I would probably say inspired is a few bars, and copied is probably note to note. There are composers who have done it very beautifully. There are great nuances which are added to it. You can't really find out whether is this a song copied. You can hardly believe it. Now the only thing that needs to be done to add legitimacy to this whole act is to credit the source and probably pay the royalty. Unfortunately the composers don't own the rights to the either the CDs or even the the whole soundtrack actually in India. If they actually claim in press saying that I have been inspired by this 
the person who is most likely to be sued is actually the film's producer and I don't think they will get work after that because if the producer is sued then this guy is finished. Where there's a song, there's a story. So here's one. Once upon a time, a British firm called GCI came to dominate the Indian market through exclusive distribution agreements. It had a famous premium label, His Master's Voice, and soon HMV became the biggest record company in India with 90% market share. Then one day, a fruit juice guy called Gulshan Kumar opened a small studio with cheap cassette technology where he recorded unauthorized versions of HMV's Hindi film songs. And he too got a famous label, T-Series. HMV wasn't so happy, so one day, they decided to do something about their unhappiness. And then T-Series became bigger than HMV and HMV got married and changed its name to Saregama. And then T-Series thought, we are respectable enough now to file our own lawsuit. And that's the story so far. Whether it's radio, TV, whether it is a disco, whether it is hotel rooms, whether it is lounge bars, anything, wherever music gets played, it, as long as it is not your private residence, you are required to obtain a license to play music. So whatever we collect, we distribute it at the ratio of 50, 30, 20, in the sense that 50% of whatever we collect goes to the music company as a publisher, 30% to the composer, then 20% to the lyric writers. But if uh, the license is for the literary works, then why are music companies part of it? Even Saregama or others, they claim that you know we are hundred percent toners. In 93, after a lot of negotiations, that kind of an MOU was reached. The music company publishers became members of the society. So what percentage of the industry's companies are members of IPRS? I would say probably between 50 to 60 because you know T-series, Yashrajas of the world are not there. They say that they do not want to part 50% with the authors and composers. <laughs> It's owned by TCs. When you want to play that song, TCs want to charge you a lot of money. Correct. Now, does that seem fair given the fact that actually centuries of work went into making that song? 
Correct. But all copyright, all copyrighted work is inspiration from society largely. So I guess it is not only who creates it, but who records it and says that's mine. And uh, the question is, can TCD charge you lots of money to do it? Yes, it attempts to charge you lots of money to do it, then, but then piracy is a great leveler. So is TCD part of the IMI? No, TCD is not a part of the IMI. Why is that? Uh, history. Do you think that the way the industry is organized right now, it's a fair and equitable organization? There's room for improvement. Elaborate. I guess there is a need uh, to first find a way to monetize the work and then share it among all the stakeholders that are involved in the pie or who are involved in the process. Creators of work, the record labels, the investors. You need to take care of all of them and that's a fair model that will operate. How do you get that to happen? Class wars have been a part of history. You'll have to live with it. You'll have to, you'll have to fight to change it. ये 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 कौन है भी लगा राइटर को ऐसा होता है कि एक कोड़ी कोड़ी के सामान वेजेस मिलते और डायरेक्टर और म्यूजिक डायरेक्टर जो एक्टर्स है करोड़ों में लेके चले जाते तो उनके रेशियो में बराबर राइटरों को भी सही दाम मिले जो राइटर का ना मुफलिशी के दौर से गुजर रहे हैं जिनको के खाने तक के प्रॉब्लम है लेकिन अच्छे अच्छे राइटर हैं जो के बहुत अच्छा नाम कमा सकते हैं Every single right is purchased at some pittance by producers because the producer lobby is very strong. The individual writer feels very helpless. So essentially, the program was to replace the helplessness of the individual screenwriter with the collective bargaining strength of the union. So it was important to regulate that relationship by having a model contract. So that is what has been drafted and negotiations are going on. Then the whole copyright amendment came about and we met with in fact the HRD minister to try and explain to him and take cognizance that it is important that screenwriters rights should be specified. How do the producers respond to the things that you all are asking for? Well, they don't respond very well, they don't take very kindly to this and uh, in fact what happened is that when we uh, proposed the model contract initiative to them. They were very reluctant. But when the copyright issue came about, the producers were very uh, keen to agree with and discuss the model contract as long as we gave this up. But we weren't willing to give this up either, neither this nor that. कि तुम अपने वैभव का बखान करोगे और सीता तुम्हारे साथ चल देगी तुम इसी समय यहां से चले जाओ नहीं तो मेरे पति एक ही बाण में तुम्हें तुम्हारी लंका सहित जला के भस्म कर देगी I take this opportunity to congratulate Vicky for launching this anti-piracy coordination cell. Can we articulate what intellectual property means and how nations who have today become larger and bigger and superpowers 
are riding on the wave of knowledge economy. There are pirates who do it for economic advantages, but there are a large number of pirates who do not have any economic stake at place. There have been parallel movements that our software should not be a sellable item, and there is an equally strong lobby of the free and open source software, which talked about not about copyright, but they talk about copyleft. When we go to police, police says, we have got more priorities like murders, etc. Why should we bother about uh, your piracy? Anyway, to begin with, on hearing much of the criticism of the police, I would first like to take up this issue rather than taking up the main issue. Lately, police has been overburdened with certain duties which police should not be supposed to do. So somebody rang up, wife refused to give sex to the husband, they say, call police. They called me. What I could do? Could I facilitate it? So your expectations are too high. You try to bring them down. You know, the intellectual property right actually creates a monopoly. The, there is a tendency to reap the super normal profits, you know, out of that IPR. And the tendency is to keep on reaping that profit indefinitely. If you are willing to share your profits, to some extent, I'm sure the piracy would go off its own. It will go because the economic reason will not remain. It's more social economic. It's not criminal. You can keep on raiding people. You have to meet the pirates in their own terms. They are going to adopt any means, and so also we, which will give them a strong message that, hey, honey, we are doing the same thing as you. Don't worry. So Reliance, Mozabair, Eros, UTV, and the Motion Pictures Association of America, we all got together and made this alliance called the Alliance Against Copyright Theft. We pulled a huge amount of financial resources into it. We are companies, and we are used to doing this. I would end my presentation today by saying, Itni shakti hume de na data, man ka vishwas kamzor ho na. Thank you. Gunda banne ke liye danger dikna mangta. <laughs> when we launched the, uh, the comic book, we worked with the Mumbai police to uh, distribute it to students. Uh, in this coming year, we'd like to work not only with the schools here in Mumbai, but also with the HRD ministry to try and get this in the primary school curriculum for students throughout India. Our members are the six major Hollywood studios. They've all engaged in local production. So because there's such great investment, the market needs to be protected as well as promoted in order to expand the film industry. You can't be successful in expanding a market if there's not a proper mindset within the industry, within the public, and within the government officials. Um, and that includes advocacy on issues such as market access barriers or taxation or the forthcoming copyright amendments. We work very closely with the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting on anti-piracy legislation. About three years ago, the RAND Corporation in, uh, in the United States, the RAND Corporation is the national security think tank for the United States government, issued a global report on film piracy and how it funds organized crime and terrorism. We've given this to the state governments, and, and this has um, really furthered the efforts of trying to get, as I mentioned earlier, the film piracy offenses, the large-scale film piracy offenses under the organized crime statutes. For instance, here in Maharashtra, last year that, that happened. But, I mean, what's the proof that it's funding terrorism? 
that you'll have to judge for yourself when you read the RAND report and you see the citations and all of the evidence that, they've, that the RAND Corporation has put together. Um, that's, not, that's not for me to, um, to, to claim or disclaim validity. The film industry in India has industry status, but it does not have any industry responsibilities. I mean, its employment practices are kind of shocking, right? And it's a kind of mafia of its own kind. So actually you are lobbying for uh, kindness to a different type of organized mafia, don't you think? Look, I, you know, the, the, uh, some of the points that you're making, I, again, we don't face those issues in Hollywood. Hindi films have uh, rampantly copied the plots of Hollywood films, and this you're aware of. I mean, you know it. But you are willing to partner with an industry that has basically violated your IPRs. Well, okay, has idea theft occurred in the past uh, here in the Hindi industry? Yes, idea theft has occurred in the past. Has it occurred um, in violation of the rights of Hollywood studios? Yes, it has. Uh, but for those, um, uh, those instances, uh, the studios, my member companies, have made an individual call whether or not to pursue the, uh, the infringers in court or to not, not pursue them in court. That's a, that's a decision that each studio has to make on their own. Um, but just because this happened in the past um, doesn't make the situation necessarily ironic or um, hip, hip, um, hypocritical either, which I think you're also inferring. Um, because the corporates, uh, we're, we're moving in India, this industry is moving towards vertical integration. Maybe that logic can then be made to apply also to people who are doing piracy. I mean, if they become film producers, would he be included in these alliances or not be? How would it work? Well, I mean, look, you're correct in the sense that the industry continues to evolve. There's an NGO for cats, the NGO for trees, for everything, but there's no NGO for piracy. It's not something which has been uh, said by us, but it's been even stated in the RAND report very clearly that the money goes to Daoud Ibrahim, from there it's going to Al-Qaeda. There are two aspects of my NGO. One is to educate the government, the other one is to educate to the public in large. We're going to have short ads, which is going on television, on the theaters and MTV channel, be news channels everywhere. Small, small, cute ads. Where is the money for the work going to come from? It's an NGO. So obviously, if you're going to go to institutions, uh, most of the big organizations have the CRC, what is it called? CSR. CSR. The CSR funding. And we could probably go and approach them. And we, we definitely intend doing that. We are doing it, but telling them. But CSR, like corporate social responsibility, is supposed to be used for things which are for the good of society. Well, this is not good of society? Because it's not there before, you, how can you call it a bad of society? Do you know what the networking is? The refugees who come into India, Mumbai, they love Mumbai because it's a film city. They're like Shah Rukh Khan, Salman Khan, blah, blah, blah. They come into the city. Their job, they, they've been given jobs because they have to survive. The networking of these underworld is so beautiful, better than a T-series on an HMV, let me tell you. What they do is they hire these guys on a 200 rupees a day. It does not matter if they sell one CD or ten CDs. Their job is static locations, outside every railway station, outside all the theatres, 
eventually the only people really being harmed by piracy are private corporates. And I think they're just linking it to this idea of terrorism to make the government fight their cause. I mean, <laughs> the corporates wanted an open market economy, right? They wanted fewer government protections. So why should the government protect them now? Why don't you have drugs openly available? Why don't you have guns available? Either way, you have a large population in a country. It doesn't make a difference if we shoot each other. You go to a, a, a supermarket and say, can I have that gun, please? Wow. I'll buy it. Where there's love, there's war. And the rules of war are usually stacked in favor of those who don't believe in love. So while the battle rages on, what weapons do they fight with, the fugitive lovers? No, I agree. So suppose I am an organization yeah. and I convert it into an accident format. Yeah. I am um, Saksham in Delhi. There is a Wilti Foundation in Delhi, mm. who wa uh, in uh, Chennai, who mm. wants the book which is converted by Saksham. I am working with Lawrence on the World Blind Union Treaty. So we are just trying to amend Indian copyright law mm. to be in consonance with uh, the constitution as well as the Convention on Rights of Persons with Disabilities. Mm which India has ratified, which actually says that intellectual property rights should not be an uh, unreasonable barrier to access uh, to cultural material. As they have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, the, that's the problem, right? In the sense that, do you look at it as a... Because when they say settlement in article some whatever, we study in law school together. So I used to work for companies that either owned intellectual property or wanted to license intellectual property. Movie music licensing is my, uh, my area of speciality. In my earlier avatar, I would say that I would do anything necessary to protect my client's interest, yeah. even if it meant uh, the artist had to suffer a little bit. I'm a lawyer and I'm a researcher, but um, I've generally been interested in looking at the relationship between law and culture. So a lot of my work has been on <clears throat> relationship between law and cinema, uh, law and literature. In other words, looking at law as a cultural process and not merely as a legal process. So that's kind of what I do. Mm -hmm. so part of a group called the Alternative Law Forum, we're a human rights lawyering group. I went to the corporate kind of space and Lawrence was doing all weird, weird things. Until I was actually invited by the World Blind Union to help draft the treaty for the, for the blind. So I was in uh, DC sitting around a table of 15 people from around the world. Three of them were visually impaired. So that's my first kind of interaction with people with visual impairment. I was totally amazed by, you know, they were like completely awe-inspiring for me how they use technology and the kind of difficulties they face. And uh, so that is a life-changing experience for me. It's estimated that in India only 0.5% of all books are available in uh, formats that people with disability can read, mm -hmm. which means that people are excluded from society simply because of copyright law, which doesn't allow the conversion and distribution of material into accessible formats. But uh, if you have to study, you have to convert. So there's this whole ecosystem which is underground. A parent taking a book, say taking Enid Blyton and then converting it for their kids and so that's the extent of which I mean if that's piracy then that's piracy. Oh, a light is back. Cut this back. In the pirate market in Bangalore there was one store and of course you know everyone goes there looking for pornography and so people had gone looking for porn and the guy realized that over a period of time that there were certain kinds of porn films which were kind of particularly, you know, uh, exceptional in terms of what they produced as an affective kind of response from, from, from buyers. Uh, and they tended to be films like In the Realm of the Senses or Last Tango in Paris. <clears throat> and there were, you know, so he 
started kind of figuring out that there's something called a story porn film for which there's a niche audience. The story porn film turns out, of course, to be the history of world cinema. He started then kind of figuring out that, you know, there is this kind of market. And over a period of time, he managed to get the entire side and sound. Then he got the entire Criterion collection. Things which are just not available, uh, either because they're no longer fashionable or because the market doesn't exist because it's too niche an audience. Uh, world cinema in India is a classic example of a market that was actually created by a combination of piracy and cinephilia to now actually have a formal market. Because it's a, always a scenario that the larger the player, the more unwilling they are to invest in the niche market. In India, there are 70 million people who require alternate formats, which is actually a pretty large uh, target market. But that target market is not organized enough for publishers to see value in converting and selling books. So basically, we have an online platform called inclusiveplanet.com, which is currently being used by visually impaired people in 80, 85 different countries. So they've started to interact with people from other countries to know what it's like and they, sh they share ideas and solutions. We are waiting for the critical mass before we actually start entering into contracts with them to actually try to sell books. But obviously, I believe that it has to be at an uh, equal or lower price. It cannot be higher price because that's not uh, really fair. Brother has a long history of capitalism and he says, the problem with capitalism is not that it is the market. The problem is that it's anti-market. So it's not about you know, some puritarian kind of idea that the market is bad. The question is what kind of market? I think technology is changing that a bit. There are ways in which the relationship between the producer and the consumer is actually kind of being redefined. So I think that this challenge of thinking through what the logic of the market is, is actually an open-ended question. What would the rules look like if lovers imagined them? If it was a love story, not a story about war. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks a lot. It was a pleasure talking to you. It was nice shopping here in Ningrajpuram. Yeah, yeah. Have a good day, Rahan. Good day, Lazar. Good night. Om Badrintai to. Some stories end with a moral. Dreams must be exchanged for plans because you cannot live on love and fresh air. Other stories end with the practical question. Without love and fresh air, how would we live? How would anything begin? Without those marketplaces of love and air, where would we chance upon and buy and tell the countless stories of our lives? अभी हमारे क्या वो फसल कटिंग चल रही है तो इनकी मैसेज वगैरह है तो इनको कॉल करती है कहाँ अभी तक आए नहीं कि अभी आ ही रहे हैं ऐसे हैं वो मतलब सब एक बार ये एक इंटरेस्ट है अंदर से कि वो कुछ बार नहीं बना के आए यहाँ पे क्योंकि आपने एक दिन का बोल के कहे अभी चार दिन हुए 
फसल खराब हो रही है बोल रहे भगवान ने जो दिया वो तो संभल नहीं रहा है परंपरा लेके बैठे हैं उत्पत्ति होगी ना जब यह हमारा काम है गाने बजा ये जो लोग ले गाना बाजारा करते हैं नहीं वो तो हमसे चुरा कर काम किए खानदान मेरा सी है हम चोरी किसने की चोरी दुनिया ने की है हाँ पूरी दुनिया ने चोरी की है हमारी कला की क्यों हमारी कला लोगों ने सुनाई सब लोगों ने सीख लिया उन्होंने तो चोरी के लिए कैसे सीट भर के और ले गए हमारी तो कोई जरूरत नहीं हम तो वहाँ गाते हैं बम्बई कलकत्ता आसाम बंगाल बिहार कटिहार डमरूगढ़ सिलीगुड़ी वहाँ गाते हैं और हम यहाँ बैठे हैं यहाँ हमारी चोरी है नहीं है ये भारत में तो क्योंकि हमारा तो मामला सारा जातियों पर निर्भर है क्या कोई एक व्यक्ति कह सकता है कि ये मेरी कला है लोक कलाओं के बारे में कोई नहीं कह सकता ये पूरी सम, उस, उस समाज की कला है उस समाज की धरोहर है फिर आप एक अनुबंध करते हैं कंपनी से फिर कंपनी ये भी कहती है कि ये आप कैसे साबित कर सकते हैं ये कला आपकी है तो जब पूरे समाज की धरोहर है तो कौन उसको राइट्स कौन कह सकता है तो उसके राइट्स को क्लेम कोई नहीं कर सकता इसलिए सभी इसका उपयोग कर सकते हैं प्रॉब्लम जब आती है कि उनकी कला को कोई काम में लेने के बाद में वो कहते हैं कि ये हमारी है क्योंकि उन्हें उनका कॉपीराइट समस्या तब आती है तो ये नए बाजार की समस्या है कला तो एक ऐसी चीज़ है जो किसी भी बंधन में नहीं बन सकती है उसका काम ही है कि आप जिस बंधन में हैं जिंदगी के उससे मुक्त करना This work actually started through uh, one of our founder trustees, John's interest in music. He's always been passionate about music, and he was aware that traditional patronage of these arts was dwindling. Over a period of time, we've evolved local virasat samitis. They are the ones who actually locally own the festival with support from the Jaipur Virasat Foundation. Are you going to come home? Am I like? Do you want to come? From an artist's point of view, a musician wants to play. A musician wants to listen, wants to play with other musicians. People assume that the folk artist doesn't want to do it. The folk artist plays in his group and does all that. But as as performers and as musicians, they have the same. Pretty much every artist has a similar kind of wanting, is to be in front of an audience, show what they can do, and and show others what they can do. And we are not working through genre. Where we are privileging a genre called folk over every other genre. That's not what we are doing. We want to facilitate collaborations as conversations between artists. The product at the end of the day is their creation. It is not our creation. So we do not assume that we should be the ones determining what the result should be. You've had your run-in with the system, haven't you? So what happened there? Uh, a jingle that I had composed. It's licensed for a year to Sony Ericsson. Specifically stated that I am the rights owner. And when we found it used in a in a feature film, we brought up the issue with the people who had used the used the uh, the jingle and converted it into a song. We didn't get any replies. Nobody at any point acknowledged the infringement. and that was the problem it was an issue of decency this could have been settled um, very amicably so we show up in court and they file um, an affidavit saying that basically this tune is theirs <laughs> and that uh, and that we um, that i'm a i'm a less reputed composer uh, than the accused composer and that um, basically i'm 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 just making this up the idea of the law is to protect the weak and uh, trust me no matter what anybody says the artists no matter how rich they are are weak are the weaker side of of the of the negotiation always folk music is the pop music of the land 
where are the modern tumris where are the modern mans where are the you know where, where are they in today's context there's a lot to be said it's not being said because the artists are just not given their due there's no point in creating because you can't be, you can't protect it and when you can't protect it the artist loses all incentive to create how are we going to find that equation between letting things be non exclusive yet monetizing them we need to start recording great albums with with these great musicians and start putting them out on a regular basis with the artist as stakeholder on the album where we strike non exclusive deals with people say for 5 years with a particular record company and after 5 years it, it reverts to us as a joint rights holder and then we can license it to somebody else if the dynamic of the industry completely changes are sunay nahi jo are sunay nahi jo sab dar ab wo tere sab dar sunai dete hain aur jinka nahi kasoor hai unhe kyun log burai hi dete hain jinka nahi kasoor hai unhe kyun log burai hi dete hain sunay nahi jo tere sunay nahi jo tere bajaye सुने नहीं जो शब्द रे अब वो शब्द सुनाई देते हैं तेरा जिनका नहीं कसूर उन्हें क्यों लोग बुरा ही देते हैं ये जिनका नहीं कसूर उन्हें क्यों लोग बुरा ही देते हैं तेरा पंचवटी पे लक्ष्मण जी ने तेरा पंचवटी पे तेरा लक्ष्मण जी ने सुर पंखा की नाक को काटा क्यों रामचंद्र जी तो समझदार थे भाई को ना डाटा क्यों रामचंद्र जी तो समझदार थे भाई को ना डाटा क्यों तेरा जिसकी बहन की रना के कटे तेरा जिसकी बहन की रना के कटे वो कर ले सहन बुराई क्यों तेरा सब कहते हैं रावण ने रे भाई सीता सती चुराई क्यों ये सब कहते हैं रावण ने रे भाई सीता सती चुराई क्यों चोरी करने वालों को क्यों तेरे चोरी करने वालों को क्यों तेरे लोग भला ही देते हैं और जिनका नहीं कसूर उन्हें क्यों लोग बुरा ही देते हैं ये जिनका नहीं कसूर उन्हें क्यों लोग बुरा ही देते हैं सुने नहीं तो Sign up with a music company and go that route. And then we get all these fancy, contracts huge contracts, and, and yeah. we're like, "Come on, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, let's let's uh, <laughs> discuss this or whatever." But it's like something about the universe. No, no, no. I, I, I love the way I, I love the way record contracts <laughs> yeah. start. The first sentence says, "Territory, the world, and the solar system." Yeah. No that's matter where you are in this place, your yeah. rear and end is it. ours. <laughs> Straight away, we're like, okay, <laughs> boss, this is like too much to handle. It, it says the world and the solar system. I mean, what is that? Why do you have to start a contract by saying, yeah. you know, the whole? I, I have it. It's all mine. First album, we made cassettes, we made CDs. Um, none of our CDs, even till today, has a price tag on it. So we just went out. How much of money you guys got to give me? Give it to me. Take the CD. Most of the guys come to gigs and say, "Hey, listen, I don't have any money. I got just fifty bucks." Okay, but the the we had our copyright uh, statement on the CDs were like on the cassettes and the CDs were like, "Please make as many copies as you can and distribute it to all your friends." This was before. The, uh, yeah. downloads and all of that came in you know we were like how do we distribute and stuff like this so just let's put it up on the net thanks to our friends in in bangalore or in the digital industry they told us about creative commons what is bittorrent we were one of the first bands to have our music up online for free 
some companies going to put a whole lot of money into building you up and in, mm-hmm. um, and promoting you then what's wrong with the fact that they want to own everything when it becomes a, a lawyer and accountant game after a, you know after things the money becomes so big that people start getting greedy or whatever else i don't know how the, that change happens but a lot of human endeavor just becomes that you know <laughs> it just turns into something that lawyers and accountants are doing do it for bands in 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 in, in the modern uh, way which is uh, not strangling them like not allow, saying that now i've got these songs of yours you can't even perform it if you're performing it anyway i i will take this much of your performance fee it's also like you have a lock in period for so many years at the time when you should be out playing and creating and that's your peak of your creativity you you're just sitting there and waiting for somebody else to do things for you as long as you stay within everybody's it's, boundaries and keep people happy everything's all right but that's not what art is about at some level if you don't challenge if you don't push if you don't explore then you're it's it's not mm-hmm. evolving right you actually have to create a new paradigm yes, exactly. when you build it up it will eventually be a profit making paradigm if we believe so yeah, we, we weren't <laughs> uh, able to support our <laughs> families, families and so and on support. right now we wouldn't be doing this so in jail yeah. by now with all our <laughs> EMIs we EMIs, do it's you have to pay uh, i think you can earn pretty well it's not uh, it's it's not that small today uh again it's for the level like we've been playing for so long so we do we have one of the top billing bands in all the pubs we are not uh, at the st- at the starting end of it but for the bands that are starting in they're still pretty young so they can live in a much smaller house or i don't know if they <laughs> they're living at home yeah, with, their they, they, with their parents so they don't need <laughs> to pay a, rents and all of those kind of things so it's well it's renowned possible. indian business model yeah. <laughs> living at home yeah we have such strong family <laughs> values and all You float The ground is but a memory Yeah Yeah this is a very cool t-shirt yeah Yeah it's good i mean they got a lot of slack for the cover from some people because it it's a very unique cover i would say So why did they get slack for it Some people didn't like it i mean it's it's a little different from a normal cover it's Normal for whom For like a metal band This is all painted and bright and in school it was more of like uh, my friends just said you know do what is this crap you're listening to just listen to some of this good stuff and I was like yeah you know where has this been all my life I'm Sahil Makija I'm better known though as Demon Stealer I was a 16 year old kid with a dream to tour the world and record and write albums and sign to the biggest label and stuff you think oh wow bands go on you know tour they fly they treat it like rock stars they party every night and then when you actually do it you realize oh shit this is not you you have to wake up you have to sound check you have to uh, get crew you have to load your gear you have to perform then after performing for 2 hours the next day travel in a bus sleeping with the same five bandmates and you're doing that for 6 months it's not a joke it's hard fucking work so you know I've realized those things right and you know what I still want to do it It was pretty simple there's no label that's going to sign our music there's no gig organizer that's going to give us shows so what do we do we just said you know screw the rest of the world we're going to do what we need to do to make this happen me and Hussein started an event of our own called Resurrection I formed my own record label eventually I got together five local Bombay bands and did a compilation called Fine Tune Disaster and from there it just took off and I every year try to release one or two bands and you know get some music out and get bands a chance to actually be heard when I do physical copies I do it for like a thousand after which I'll renew a contract with them so they also have the right to sort of negotiate I don't keep any of the major rights I only take rights for uh, now for digital distribution and publishing which again they are uh, five year periods after which they revert back to the artist and there's a I give the highest split with any artist al- almost a 50 50% you know so it works out well for bands why do you do that uh, well I guess I my intent is not to rip off the band If the scene does not exist, you do not exist. You can't be one band and nobody else there to support you as well, you know. We've laid the foundation and there are people who are following up after us. And yeah, record labels obviously have gone the wrong way by doing that. You know, here's a chick, give her a couple of implants, make her wear some slutty clothes and you have your music there. The music was not the primary this thing, which is why it didn't work out as a business model, I think. You buy a CD for 500 bucks, there's one good song on it. I mean pretty picture I'm going to cut it I'll buy a playboy if I need to say that you know
lot of like not a lot but some amount of hindi film song references yeah. in your songs right yeah so you're actually in violation of copyright when you do that what well, would you uh, what are you going to do i mean like i mean, it's it's not like we're 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 not about to raise up yeah what got we're an impoverished malnourished metal band from bombay i mean if you really got to have nothing better to do to come go up to scribe and say that why are you touching bollywood back from the 90s that everyone's forgotten or almost forgotten if i have if we've written a song and if i see it played somewhere more than me being like you know fuck these guys i'm going to sue them get money i'll i'll just be obliged man i'll be like that's so cool that it's playing here like i'll just be happy you know i think that's the way yeah, I think that's the way we are, you know. Who wants to sign you on this stuff? Do you want to do that? Like, I think uh, we're we're just like best at doing our stuff independently because there's a certain way of doing things uh, that we like. There's enough expertise in this band to do it all on our own. Akshay can produce it. He can figure the artwork. You shoot the video, and I'll just talk. Oh, I'll just talk about it. <laughs> so, you know, tera aur main baat kar. Aana. Aana. Sabra samne ke. Yeah. I was uh, sitting on this on a website saying may all these releases are in demand and I kept searching where to get them where to get them and everywhere I went please send us a check for this much and I don't have a bank account I'm really sorry please pick it up when you come here yeah, yeah. like this is no fun so or right. I said let me try and do something then one day then the next day when I was going to school I don't know from where it struck me but I thought I can sell the stuff I can pack it and send it. There's a post office right here. So then I spoke to Sahil and all these other guys, and they sent me the CDs and they started promoting it. I started promoting it, and slowly it started running smoothly. I'm distributing about 16 bands. The only unique feature I think there is is that you can pay cash on delivery. Anyone? I know someone who ordered once and he was like 12 years old. So he saved up hundred rupees every month or something. So even when he has the three hundred rupees, then he, there should be some way where he can get the CD. This is one for a Bayanak Moth box set and T-shirt. Get to packing that. Initially in January I got 10 orders and now I get about 50 to 60 every month. Everybody says that nobody wants to buy CDs anymore. Everybody wants to download for free. So what's the point of starting such a business? Because bands still want to sell music and it's bread and butter for bands. <laughs> Are you shooting the concert? Yeah, yeah, I'm shooting the concert. Uh, the thing is, there's a lot of bands in India which don't have a proper live DVD. So I'm just doing that. How much are you charging them? No comment. No comment? For Sahil, our second album was recorded at his uh, studios for free. So the least you could do is just like you know offer so some service that you can do rather than like you know charging them and then feeding off the scene. So it's just. Uh,